Hey guys, welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Carl, Brandon, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. If you like our content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. YouTube's doing funny stuff with our channel. It so is, dude. Help us out. Mm. Give us a subscribe. Uh, hopefully, YouTube will count your views and subscribe. Bad YouTube. Stop doing that, please. Um, but welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we got a great episode t- for you today. Before we get into that, come down and join us for our Vilcabamba Lifestyle Retreat. Nine days starting July 21st this month, just a couple of weeks. So if it's summer and you're thinking about Ecuador and you got a little time on your hands, come down and join us. It's a beautiful, amazing, fun nine-day experience, kind of a crash course on Vilcabamba beautiful accommodations. We give you the full gamut of information, seminars, Q&As, expert panels, uh, great food, great time, great atmosphere, tours of all the areas, etc., etc. It really is a lot of fun. So we'd love to see you down here on July 21st. And just a little side note on that. I've had people asking me questions about they want to do some specific things down here that we don't necessarily offer during our retreat. But I just want to say that we're very flexible. If you want to go visit a certain thing, if there's something that you're really into, uh, someone asked about archery. There's archery in Vilcabamba. We could we could include that. Like we, we just want to make sure that everyone's taken care of. That we're very flexible. We can change activities around. We can, if you have suggestions, we could even you know do some things with the whole group that that you're interested in. So just thought I'd give you. A little heads up on that as well. Yeah, and just so you guys understand, sort of the the point of the retreat is for folks who are considering Ecuador, considering the area, and want to have a very efficient learn everything you would need to learn to make a decision. That's kind of the point of the retreat, right? So in those nine days, you're getting a very hands-on feel, but you're also getting information, uh, the full gamut of information. So you're literally learning everything you would need to know to decide, hey, I'd like to live here. I'd like to potentially invest or do business here. Um, And you will be able to make that decision confidently, I think, at the end of those nine days. So um, that is that. All right, guys. So we're going to continue sort of uh, talking about some of the differences between the Western world, so to speak, and Ecuador, uh, you know, life south of the border um, and get into kind of some of the hilarity, right? Some of the quirks and some of the funny stuff that um that we have down here because it is different and you know just a quick anecdote before we really get into the meat of it um because it is a learning curve right it is an adjustment period i think for everybody it definitely was for me um i moved here you know 10 years ago directly to loja uh very few english speakers if any to speak of really in loja starting a business kind of got my crash course you know on the ground making all the mistakes and what i noticed is that First of all, I was very frustrated for a while, um, and that's just kind of was my personality too, right? Like, you know, I'm just kind of used to things being fast and convenient and quick and getting frustrated if they're not that way. They're not that way here, um, right? And then, and then realizing over the course of the next two to four years, the whys as to all why things happen the way they do which didn't make sense to me at the beginning. And then a year later, two years later, three years later, I figure out, oh, that's why they do it that way. Um, and kind of and kind of coming full circle on a lot of those things. And then over time, for my personality, you know, realizing that, oh, wow, I actually like the mentality so much better um, because it's such a more relaxed way to approach life. It's such a more just calm, uh, non, non-judgmental, non-accusatory, relaxed sort of way to flow through life is kind of the, 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 the way people go about it here, just the culture here, which I think is the opposite of, of certainly New York, probably the U.S. in general. Um, and, and I really came to appreciate it and to love it, but there were those frustrations in the beginning. So anyways, all right, let's jump right into it. Do you want to uh, pull sure, that list sure. up? Sure, yeah. Yeah, the first topic we want to talk about is food, right? And I think about myself, when I, I traveled, I went to Europe, I went to South America, I traveled through Canada, the U.S., and any, every time I've gone traveling, I like food, I enjoy food, I always think about what is there to eat there. You know, you get excited yep. about mm-hmm. when, I went out, when I went to France, you know, getting some, some good baguettes, some real French cheese, you know, trying the French wine. Same thing in Spain, um, going down to South America, what are we going to eat there? We were vegan back then, so we had <laughs> fewer options. But I was thinking about all the fruits and the things that we'll get to try. And so food's important. You know, when you decide to pick a place to live, like 
what am I going to eat? Am I going to show up in Ecuador and only eat rice and beans and bananas, right? Is there other things to eat here? <laughs> There's a lot of rice and beans and bananas. <laughs> I think For my sure. son would only eat rice, lentils, and bananas and be fine. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely some really good bananas here. Like, I've never tried a good banana in Canada. They don't right. taste good. They're imported. They're well, they're, and they're usually imported from Ecuador, and they right. don't. but they don't taste good. My kid, so Jacob, my four-year-old, yeah. he will not eat the bananas in the States. Yeah, yeah. He, he pounds bananas here. We go home. We go home. I, I'm like, he wants the stories like banana. We buy him bananas. He takes a bite. He like looks at it and hands it back to me. And's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You know, if you love bananas, definitely banana. <laughs> bananas are abundant here, and they're extremely cheap. That's probably one of the cheapest food you can get, between ten and ten and five uh, to ten cents. Yeah. yeah, ten to twenty bananas for one dollar, right? And if you get the whole rack, if you get the whole yeah. bunch, you usually pay even less than that, right? So, if you're a banana lover, you can do that. You can freeze them, dry them. Make banana ice cream. We love bananas. All right. <laughs> Dude, back in the day, when you were vegan, you were eating like what? Oh, yeah, yeah, like no. 30 bananas a day or I've something. I've done like. the 30 bananas a day. <laughs> yeah. Right? Isn't that, isn't that, wasn't that a thing. YouTube a channel? Thing. Like yeah, no, 10,000 bananas if, a year? Oh, really? 1,000 bananas a day. Or what was it? Wasn't that like uh, Free Lee the Banana 30, Girl? 30 bananas a day. Yes. That's what they call so it. So did you I follow Free Lee back then? Of course, yeah. Did you? Really? We were into that. I was the other guy. Wasn't it like Durian Rider? I think I remember. Isn't yeah, he the hey. guy that would like drink sugar? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? That's, that's right. <laughs> he would drink sugar because he was like, oh, carbs aren't bad for you. And he'd drink yeah. sugar and eat bananas. And yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Carl telling me once, this has to be like really? six years ago or more. I remember you telling me once, we're talking about bananas and how many bananas you eat. I remember you telling me something like, you know, apes, they, they eat all their, look how strong gorillas are. What do they eat? Bananas. Like, that, was, that was, that was a good vegan argument, right? right look right, at gorillas right. and chimpanzees. They're so strong, right? And they eat yeah. nothing but like, leaves and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Hey. So some of the, yeah. So some of the food in Ecuador stuff, I mean, I don't know. How do you guys feel about the food down here? Like for me, Ecuadorian food in general is not always my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, like there is really good food you can get and the food on the coast in general i really like um the food on the coast tends to be a cut above in my opinion all my lojano friends i know you're very prideful <laughs> about your lojano food i don't like it as much i'm sorry <laughs> um, but yeah for me the sierra the mountains the food is not as good for me uh the coast for me is better the the i would put um i would put the food in the orient the amazonian region in between those two uh, but yeah, in the mountains, you know, they eat, they eat a lot of soups. The soups are probably the, my favorite thing mm -hmm. here. They, they tend to do the soups pretty well. Yeah. And then usually, yeah, there's usually rice and, uh, some meat and the meat can either be delicious or not. Uh, and then sometimes some lentils or some beans or a little bit of salad. And that's kind of yeah. the way people eat. Yeah. Well, Vilcabana is a little different, right? Yes. You got tons of international restaurants. So you got all the flavors you want from all over the world. Ecuadorian food, particularly, you know, I like trying new things. Uh, like I said, we were ve vegetarian vegans for a while, so we didn't really try a lot of Ecuadorian food. But um, you know, I enjoy I enjoy the traditional repe, the green repe banana blanco. soup. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's a Lojano. It's like favorite. my one, of, probably my least favorite soup. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Yeah. What is it? It's, it's like green green bananas that are cooked with uh, cheese. I think. Oh, <laughs> the soup. I think they put a little yeah, a little bit of the mm, cheese. Sounds in great. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It doesn't taste like bananas. It tastes yeah. like potatoes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's an interesting soup. Hey, welcome to try it. Like a bowl of soup here is usually like a dollar or something. It yeah. comes with a two and a half, three dollar meal. Right. So if you just want a you know nice bowl of soup, they make really good repe at the fish restaurant right close to our office there on the mm. corner. I have no idea why everyone calls that the fish restaurant. But <laughs> I yes, know, right? It's called the Vilcabamba restaurant. <laughs> so that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. actual name. But somehow it got the name the fish restaurant. Yeah. So that's where you can get fish almost all the time Man, yeah the food's <laughs> terrible but um no it's always packed actually that restaurant is always packed yeah there's you usually, usually have to wait in line almost to eat there uh during lunchtime right and it's because they make full almuerzos for two two fifty three dollars you get a lot of food i mean i don't even know how they can right sell explain for that price. explain what the el muerto is what you get on the plate so people yeah. can kind of visualize because it's a big plate and it's a lot of food for two dollars and fifty cents yeah typically you get the the soup first so you know the perepe or any other you know chicken soup uh, bean soup whatever um, and it's a, nice a big, big bowl, bowl of soup. soup. Yeah. yeah, it's a big bowl yeah, of soup. Yeah, nice big bowl of soup. Then you get a plate with rice, beans, a little salad, and a, a type of meat. So uh, chicken, fish. 
They make really good fish. With and it. a starch. You should get you get like a some yuca, you get some yuca, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It depends what they had that day. <laughs> Probably what, right. what vegetables they had left. But uh, yeah, rice beans, a little salad, and uh, you know, and a drink. Nice, you colorful. get a drink, some and horchata drink, or, right. a or lemonade, some kind or of, yeah. something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. Naranjilla juice, right? It's popular there. <laughs> yeah, but on the coast, you know, you can get phenomenal seafood. Um, that's something I really enjoy. The ceviche, and the, the they make a uh, they make an amazing soup called encebollado. Mm -hmm. Up north, mm -hmm. they have up north they have sort of the Afro Caribbean style cooking more with a lot of coconuts, coconut sauces, and more curry type stuff that's delicious. Um, and yeah, the, the flavors for me on the coast tend to be amazing, but also just you're buying, you're getting, you're getting food out of the water that day, right. you know, Fresh. which is amazing. Yeah. And the, you know, a lot of the food, I'm not going to say like the average Ecuadorian meal is healthy necessarily because they're using bad oil. If you're in that, you know, if you have health, yeah, that's matters to you, right? They're using bad oil. They're using, um, you know, regular rice and, 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 you know, it's not like, it's not healthy per se, but it's healthier, right? The, the meat is clean for the most part in Ecuador. So if you're, you know, you're getting that meat with the meal is pretty clean. Um, there is some vegetables that come with it. The soups are relatively healthy. There's going to be, you know, carrots and yuca and, and different things like that. So it's not, you know, it's, it's a decent diet if you just eat the regular diet here. Well, it's not a lot of fried food, you know, no, not a ton. you might have one thing that's fried on the plate, mm -hmm. but, um, and you, when you said bad oil, you means like sunflower oil or palm oil. You know? Yeah, whatever. Even right, can, yeah. It's not bad, like it's gone bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Non-rancid oil. What was that? What was that place in Loja that we went? They had the. All right, we had a slight interruption there from a couple of barking dogs. Um, so where were we? Yeah, so so Loja, we went to that we went to that seafood place in Loja that had the Peruvian kind of influence on the on the. The ceviche, the the encebollado. We had that seafood, or was that one dish? I don't even know uh, what it was called. It was, um, some the uh, corvina al bravo. Oh, it was, good, it yeah. was amazing. Yeah. yeah, but that that place, which uh, is a Peruvian dish, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's some Peruvian influence yeah. in some of that food. So maybe that's what it is. Is that what is that what you don't you know you like less about the mountains? Is it the like the, the spices, the, the, the sauces, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's, I think honestly, you know, my bias is going to come out here completely, but I think it's the difference between, you know, like the food you would get in the middle of the country in the U.S. versus the coast. Oh, like, man. Like, yeah. like, uh -oh. Those are like fighting <laughs> words. Yeah, but yours your is a little different. Chicago's a city that all probably right. has all the goods, you know, but if Keep like, backpedaling. I think if you're in, you know, some like kind of podunk town, which is most of the, of sure. the mountains here, I right? See. Yeah. In the middle of the country, the food's going to be yeah. relatively bland. Yeah, you don't get that nuance. Right. That. Whereas if you're right. in New York, Boston, Chicago, L.A., Miami, you know, you're yeah. going to have great. I that. Yeah, I think it's kind of similar to that. What was the name of that place in Loja? I have no idea. Remember. Yeah, no, that was no, good. No, that was really good. No, it, it was, was it was a new place. It was really good. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, but, other th go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean some of the some of the funnier things though we should we should definitely touch on. So you know I know you mentioned the guinea pig, the cooey. Um, so guinea pig here is something that delicacy that people actually. eat. It's not it's not countrywide by any stretch. It's really Cuenca and Loja. I don't know outside of Cuenca and Loja. I don't know if they really eat guinea pig. Like I don't know in Quito if they eat guinea pig. Definitely not on the coast. Um, you've tried? Are you? No, you've tried. I tried. So it, what, yeah. how, what was your cooey review? Yeah, I mean review? just FYI. Like, both Jesse and I have been here for 20 plus years. We've never tried it. We never Kui. tried it. Brandon, Combined, a couple, of years, yeah. <laughs> a couple yeah. of years, and he's tried it a few times. Yeah, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to try it because you see it in the street fest. You see it, you know, even they had that that health festival last year, and they had them on spits and roast. Yeah, that's know, how they do it. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I didn't try. I, I couldn't eat it then, mm -hmm. but I was, I was at a restaurant that I enjoy, El Mexicano, and um, they had a cooey dish. So I tried, I just tried couple of bites so you've tried a non-ecuadorian version <laughs> guinea pig dish, which yes. that's just funny yes, in, yes. in ecuador in that's ecuador. great yeah. that was I, I i felt most comfortable doing that. <laughs> right, right. you trust you trust Raul. Uh, so cool. Raul, yeah so so it was it was like it almost didn't have like a strong flavor the texture was a little not quite chickeny maybe a little more rubbery than mm -hmm. than chicken um yeah. But there wasn't. It didn't have a strong flavor. You need it's. It, it, it tasted like the sauce it was in. The sauce was good. Yeah. But the meat itself, it wasn't super tender. It wasn't. 
It almost had a little more, almost yeah, like well, you'll have to try alligator. The, you'll have to try like the Ecuadorian on a stick. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> you next see time, them. You see time. them on spits. Yeah, with right. the with the stick coming out of their mouths, Weird. and it's, you know, I had graphic. guinea pigs as pets as yeah. kids. I just as a kid, I just yeah. can't do it. That's but. why I couldn't eat it at the festival. You know, and I yeah. see it, I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, but if you're into that though, it's a very cheap way to get meat. Basically, it's probably cheaper than no. The kui's expensive, is it? Yeah, the kui's expensive. So like to buy, like at the restaurants, like the kui places. I've seen the prices many times. Yeah, well, I say this because a lot of locals have just you know a little family of kui in the backyard because they eat those, and you can feed them grass. You can feed them, you know, your compost. Yeah, and they make good and they make good compost. I know people that use them in that dual purpose. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, so that, that's one of the quirks for one. sure. <laughs> yeah, the other was, if you guys had goat, I, I ate goat for the first time in my life. Yeah. What? Last week. Yes. It was Seco de Chivo. It was mm-hmm. called Seco de Chivo. And it was this, it's like these cuts of, of meat on the bone, but it was super like fall off the bone, almost tender, super tender, all the Every, everything like the bone marrow was good the sauce was good everything was was really good and that was it that was at sammy's restaurant so shout out to our our friend bobby and Catherine. bobby plays basketball with with us carl you're coming to basketball this week i hear i heard a rumor i think i'll make it on monday all right Jesse. there you go we'll so yeah so bobby comes out and and plays basketball with us but we have uh they, they opened up a restaurant in town that's that's got some really, really cool stuff. They do a great smoked chicken, mm-hmm. but I was brave enough to, uh, to, to try the, the, the goat. Nice. Yeah. And, and the, it was good. I would eat it again. Like I want to eat it now. I'm like, my mouth is watering now. <laughs> so tips on goat, which I've eaten many times in the States cause I really like West Indian food and they, you know, the Jamaican curry goat is incredible, but the goat down here is pretty common. If you're going to eat the goat down here, like get it somewhere that's, known to prepare the goat well it is not easy to make goat taste good um if you make it right it's delicious if you make it wrong it's unedible so uh and then zapotillo which is uh is really where most of the goats in this country come from um that's the place down there you can get just i mean you're gonna be blown away when i take you down there to taste the goat yeah and they do uh, they do that two different ways, right? They have the seco to everything, right? Pollo, res, chivo, you name it. Um, they also have the uh, chivo al hueco, which is kind of cool. They make a big pit in the ground, like literally under the ground. And then they cook the goat in there for hours uh, mm-hmm. with a lid. Uh, and it's kind of yeah. smoking out of the ground. Nice. And that's, an, you know, it's pretty cool, yeah. Chivo al hueco. Yeah, on a side note, like I just want to talk about all the amazing exotic fruits and vegetables that we have available here for a fraction of what you'd pay in the Western world. The mangoes are out of this world. Like there's yeah, many mango varieties. Mango season is awesome. Mango yeah. season is awesome. I mean, you've never tried a mango like that in the U.S. I don't think you can export those. They would probably spoil. They don't have as much fiber. They're just mm. so tender and sweet. They melt in your mouth and they're really good, really good. Yeah, my parents, my parents came here in January, so they got, I think it was the end of mango <coughs> season, but my mom had mangoes yeah, it's and right fell around in that love, time of year, yeah. fell in love and was like, oh my God. And then they were back and it was a couple months later. And she, she sends me a, a, vi- a picture that she was in our local, you know, uh, supermarket and she's got a Ecuador, Ecuador mango. She's like, oh my God, I can't wait to get it, it home. Terrible. And she got home and she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, there's certain mangoes the same, for export. Man. The ones we have here, that's a cool thing, you know, in Ecuador. We have access to a lot of the produce, uh, exotic fruits that that can't be exported. Um, I mean, we, we just get it well. fresh and yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah, the pineapples. I mean, the Hawaiian pineapples, the yellow ones, they're amazing. Sweet watermelons are pretty good if you get a good one, but you know, a fraction of the price also. Um, what else? The avocados. I mean, yeah, the variety of avocados. fruits is amazing. There's so many fruits down yep. here that I had never seen, much less tried before. Right. You know, the achotillos, mm-hmm. and uh, those are pro- those are probably my favorite fruit, actually. Yep. And the guava, which is this very long green fruit with white meat inside. Mm-hmm. And uh, those and, are referred to as ice cream beans. Yeah. In other places. Oh, okay. And what they call guava here is that. And, and what they call guayava is what we call guava. Right. Exactly. exactly. The yellow. The yellow, yeah. What's the other G fruit? Gu- guanabana. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's soft. good. Very good stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. Has, that has all kinds of health properties. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them do, but. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what's amazing. Like, we cook a lot at home, actually. We don't eat out a lot. I mean, sometimes we do, but. 
But yeah, the fact that you can get produce for a fraction of the price, yeah. abundance, and it's fresh, it's good, it's, you know. Well, I mean, what's stuff. cool too, right, is like when I was in the States, I used to buy a lot of the superfood powders mm. to make smoothies and stuff. And they're very expensive, or, or you could buy sometimes the liquid, you know, in a bottle. All those fruits are available here. Right, like right. You can just eat the fruits. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to buy the powders that come from here or whatever. Yeah. You just buy the fruits, which is awesome. Yeah. Have you had the wild raspberries, like the, yeah. the moras, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, the red salvajes ones. or yeah. whatever? Yeah. The, not the ones that are cultivated, the ones that they just go out and pick. They're, they're smaller. They're like purplish. Yeah. Almost brownish, yeah. yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. very dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can buy a whole tub for a dollar twenty-five. It's a dollar twenty-five a pound, and that's packed with antioxidant. And yeah, it's like a superfood, really, and it's a wild food. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's only available seasonally. But when it's out, we, we buy a whole bunch. We freeze it. We make ice cream and smoothies and stuff. And there are a few downsides. Like you know, it's it's hard to get a great apple. You can get mm-hmm. uh, some decent ones from Chile. Um, you essentially can't get an organic apple. That's hard. Uh, once in a while, Franco has a few, yeah, I was gonna uh, say, which are he's awesome. Got, yeah. He's got some great, when, when he has them, the apples, and then he's got heirloom pineapples, organic nice. heirloom pineapples oh, awesome. that are really, really Man, awesome. those heirloom, have you guys, if you guys haven't had a chance to run into uh, Marino's and grab the heirloom tomatoes that he has oh, yeah, in right. there, yeah. they're, they're, they taste yeah, so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You can tell they're organic. You can tell oh, they, yeah, they grew in sure. someone's garden. Like, you, can yeah. f- you can't find those otherwise. No. So. Yeah, we'll go and buy like his five pound, ten pounds, and we'll make tomato sauce. And, no, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... no, I mean, in general, it's kind of funny here, right? Like in Vilcabamba, to, to go shopping, you've got to go to five to ten <laughs> right, different right, stores, yeah. right? So you people will be doing like the, the store crawl, right, you know, like right. around Vilcabamba to pick up their groceries. But, you know, as long as you're willing to do and it's fun, too, because, you, you know, you can't go into town without having 30 conversations with friends of yours so you know you're chatting with people but if you're willing to do that you really can get just about everything you're looking for um that you would be able to find back home with a few exceptions right Right. yeah that's accurate Mm -hmm. yeah awesome all right let's skip to this one right here the language loops so the three of us uh speak some spanish i think brandon you're still learning Uh, i'm just curious about you know, clearly learning Spanish was, was a challenge to, in some, to some extent. And we've had some, you know, some funny um, anecdotes of when we've uh, said the wrong thing or, you know, uh, misunderstood something in Spanish. But I'm just curious, you guys, like, how, how, how was it learning Spanish or how are you doing with your Spanish? Well, I mean, <laughs> he'll let us know in a couple of years. <laughs> you, you guys can, you, these guys keep making fun of me. So I did that Mother's Day video with Feliz my kids. Dia de la Madre. And I sound like I'm, you know, I'm sounding like I'm Tony Soprano. Feliz Dia de la Madre. <laughs> oh my. This was great. I lived with awesome. my grandparents for 18 years and they're both uh, from Italy. So I've got a little, <laughs> oh, yeah. a little of that in the influence. No, the, nice. the language is. It's uh, much more challenging than I expected. I took yeah. Spanish in high school. But you also haven't put the time in. No, no, no. No, yeah. but I, I, I took Spanish in, in high school. I, I'm from a from a, a city that's 60% Sp- Mexican Spanish. So I, I grew up with a lot of Hispanics culture. And I, I was more fluent in Spanish then than I am now. And mm. I just thought it would come back with just immersion. And it's really not my kids. My daughter is yeah. great. My son is picking it up, but they're like fully immersed in, you know, with sports and, and that kind of stuff. So they're they're picked it up. But I, I've needed. I've tried to give it this long, and we actually started taking taking classes. Nice. Um, so I'm starting to, yeah, take formal classes and study. And I've got a book now, and yeah, so. Nice. That's good. No, I mean that's that's how you got to do it. Sometimes you come here, you you, know, you want to learn the language, in my opinion, yeah, at yeah. least the basics. And I've heard you practice. Have you heard? Have you heard yeah, you speak Spanish? I try. You know, I mean, yeah. I sound like a moron, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Jesse? You're married in the culture. You're yeah. married to an Ecuadorian. That must have been yeah. Well, there's helpful. a there's a different. I mean, yeah. Girlfriends taught me the language, like truthfully. Um, <laughs> but there's a difference between levels of immersion, right? Because I didn't study at all, but I was living in Loja, right. running a... Oh, that's full immersion. Full immersion, right. yeah. My, and, and I wasn't married. So you came down You came down to Vilcabamba, where a lot of people speak English, yes. with an English-speaking family. You're at a significant disadvantage, right. right? Like, I was in a Spanish-speaking city with Spanish-speaking girlfriends. 
trying to run a business in Spanish. Um, that was hell on earth. No, uh, no, no. But it was a difficult, you know, a difficult period of time, right? Like I, I literally would finish every day with a headache. Um, I'd have a headache at the end of every day wow. from an entire day of trying to understand what's taking place. Nice. But yeah, you learn it relatively quickly that way. Um, the other way is to study for real. Um, but some of the funny stuff is great. I mean, there's all these translations, and I've told this story before, but there's all these translations that the direct translation is one thing, but it has another meaning. One of those words is excited. Um, so I kept saying, I kept telling everybody I'm excitado, uh, which I'm translating from excited, which in Spanish means horny. Right. Um, so I am, I am walking around telling people I'm horny about this, I'm horny about that, you know, thinking I'm saying I'm excited about this, I can't wait for that. And uh, I'm getting smirks and giggles and, and you know, all kinds. Of, finally, someone explained it to me, but I, I had probably done it 10 or times or, or more before yeah. somebody said it. Yeah, yeah. And there's a distinction between soy and estoy, right? Soy is, is permanent, estoy is kind of temporary like in the moment so my wife used to say estoy embarazada like i'm embarrassed but that actually means i'm pregnant, pregnant. <laughs> and you can't be estoy you have to be soy embarazada because it's right? more permanent i guess or oh, maybe not i don't no, know I don't i'm know. not even sure about that one but yeah. but it's funny the word embarrassed the word you think they translate as embarrassed means pregnant right because it's kind of <laughs> right. embarrassing to get pregnant <laughs> i don't know if there's a relationship there or not but. i think there might be something there yeah, i don't know is one of those things, yeah. Yep. Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I have a bit of an advantage. French is my first language. English was my second language. French is a Latin language, so Spanish and French have some similarities. And um, I'd taken one year of Spanish in high school. I traveled in Spain when I was 18 for four months. So I had a base when I first came here. But yeah, definitely um, living in Vilcabamba could be a disadvantage compared yeah, to living definitely. somewhere where everyone speaks Spanish. Because here you can basically... You yeah. basically get around with only English. It takes discipline in Vilcabamba to learn Spanish. Whereas if you're somewhere where people don't speak English, it's just not an option. Right. But I've seen people do it in 6 to 12 months who study. So if you're willing to study you, and you hit it, you can 6 to 12 months you can speak Spanish reasonably well. It took me like 12 to 24 uh, to really get reasonably comfortable. But that I wasn't studying, so... Yeah, but you were in it, like in Loha. Nobody immersed. speaks English. I was immersed. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. Yeah, something about the language. A little side note. I think I, I like to address because people, local people here, will call us gringos, mm -hmm. right? Los gringos, eh, mi amigo el gringo, uh, los gringuitos, talking about the kids, right? And some people might take offense to that. I think in Mexico, it's an insult if someone yeah. calls you a gringo. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like insulting. Here, not at all. It has no. nothing to do. It's they're literally just describing you. You're not from here. Right. You could be from France. You could be from Portugal. You could be from, yeah. you know, Germany, Canada. You're a gringo, basically. Right. Um, as a foreigner. And uh, sometimes it could be endearing. Like right. Like those gringuitos. Right. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, there is a... Our Spanish teacher was telling us that um, in that same vein that, you know, she's she's the more darker complexioned of her family. And mm -hmm. her nickname is Negro. Negro. Yeah. Negra. 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 Yeah. Negra. And it's like an endearing yeah, on, term. On it's Negra. Negrita. 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 Yeah. And yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about the culture. There's no political correctness. Mm -hmm. Like you can just say what's on your mind and nobody will take offense. Right. And you can call everybody's nicknames are just how they look. So you're right. either like Gordo or Gorda, which is like fat, fat, fat. Fat, you know, fatsy, fat, you know, fatty, like fatty thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> fatty or, or your flaco or flaco, which is skinny Slim. or your ne negra, negrito, negro, you know, you all those kinds of things uh, for your color or your, you know, your, your tall or your short or your, right? those, are, those things are totally accepted, which, which is nice, man, to not have that, you know, that discomfort of just people appear how they appear and that's okay. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, you call that it is. Yeah. And you know nobody's trying to be insulting. Uh, as no. you said, yeah, no, it's such a respectful culture, and that right. that that you know that uh, almost desire to feel disrespected and react just doesn't exist here. But. Mm -hmm. Right, right. right. Yep. All right, we're getting on to punctuality. That's a fun one. That is a fun <laughs> one. A funny that is one. A fun one. It's a different mindset, isn't it? <laughs> We've gotten used to it. We've, yeah. we've kind of adopted it. Yeah, I say yeah. we like the three of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. How did you learn about it? 
Well, it was funny for me. I mean, I'm coming from, I think most of the states is like this, but in New York, I mean, you know, somebody will give you five minutes like once. Man, 10 minutes, the person's not there anymore, um, including me. Like, if someone was 10 minutes late, I wouldn't even answer the phone after that. <laughs> like, that's, well. that's the end of me doing business with them. Um, and yeah, down here, you know, you don't even know if the person's necessarily going to show up or not. Uh, it's a totally different mentality around that stuff. Again, it's something I've come to really <laughs> love and appreciate because it takes the pressure off. And it's not, it's not just that people are habitually late or habitually not showing up. It's that there's just a different relationship to responsibilities and time. And it's a little bit more focused on uh, your personal needs than it is business and money and time come first, right? So it's like, it's very, it's completely normal and acceptable for someone to be late because they had stuff they were doing that took a little longer or that came up or that they had to attend to. And everybody's cool with that. Like everybody understands that. Um, you know, I've even seen professionals in Loja, right? Where if they have a 2.30 meeting, they'll just sort of, they just know they have to be close to their office around that time. So that if the person shows up, their secretary or whatever will call and tell them and they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. And they'll go in the next five to 15 minutes, you know, they'll be there. But there's not that expectation of, and that pressure of needing to be there at a certain time exactly or, or being like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, right? I'm five minutes. Like, you don't have to do any of that, which is really nice. Um, of course, you give people heads up and people do that here all the time. Hey, I'm running a little late, right. you know, uh, uh, or I can't make it. And, and of course you're going to do that. That's expected and acceptable, but yeah, it's a different relationship with time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a good tip for that. Like if I go show a property and the owner needs to come open the, 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 the house, for example, I'll always, let's say we, you know, we agree three o'clock, we're going to be there. I'll always check in half an hour later, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, or before are you, you, you going to make, uh, sorry, uh, half an hour before, are you going to make it on time? Should I come a little later? And, you know, usually it works out pretty good if you, as long as you communicate. If you just show up at three and you expect they be there at three, they might, you might have to wait for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Sure. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. And people will do, some people, not everyone, but there is a segment of the population that will do funny stuff with that. Like they'll tell you, you know, they're late and they're just leaving Loja, which is 45 minutes away. Right, right. And they'll tell you like, oh, I'm in San, you know, I'm, I'm 10 minutes away. And then. They're just leaving Loja, right? There is some people who do stuff like that. That part is annoying. But yeah. then after a while, you know, you figure out who's, who's you know, honest and, and has integrity in those ways and who doesn't. And, you know, those people weed themselves out pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a more laid back culture, laid back society. Plus, we live in the countryside, so it's a little different probably than Guayaquil and Quito, you know. For sure. Yeah. No, I mean, you've, you've told me a couple of funny anecdotes where you're calling taxis and they're telling you like they're telling yeah, you they're yeah, like yeah. on almost there on their right. way and I'm, I'm, one minute i'll be there in a minute 15 minutes later you still coming <laughs> just yeah. getting back from I'll, I'll be right there i'll be right there <laughs> yeah. yeah it can be annoying i mean in a way be, if you have that mindset like you expect to be disappointed when it comes to that and then when someone's actually on time you're like, really nice. pleasantly surprised, <laughs> right? right? Uh, but you always have to factor in, like a taxi. If you call them, you know you, you have to call them maybe half an hour in right. advance for them to. And once you time. once you really understand that, this is the thing. It's all about communication. You gave the best tip, right? Which is that you just check in. Right. But once you understand, once you learn how to interpret the nuances of the communication of the culture and the language, that stuff has a rhythm to it that's actually very easy to decipher by people's tone of voice, by the way they mm -hmm. say when they're coming and how and you you know already whether they're going to be late or not or if they're actually coming or not um most of the communication here is much less direct than it is back home it's much more in the in the nuance of the tone of voice and the words chosen uh to speak and you figure that out after a while and then and then that stuff really stops happening like you really you already know when someone's like yeah i'll, I'll be there you know i'll be there you're like oh they're not coming Right. And you, and, you, and you already know that. So there isn't any you're not disappointed. You're just you just say back to them, you know what, don't worry, like we'll reschedule. And then they're like, oh, great, great, great. Because that's really what they meant, you know, but they don't tell you that directly. So, right, right. Yeah. Didn't you guys have an example? Yeah, I, because even for like large events, like community events, 
they'll say it starts at a certain time and it starts way later. Sure. Oh, yeah. that's you went to that show in Loa, didn't you say? That's, that's like every yeah, event yeah, that I've yeah, ever been yeah. part of in Ecuador. It's yeah. all right. Starts at ten. It's noon. All right, people are starting to show up. Right. <laughs> you know, or and that's true for social events right. also. Yeah, a- you know, everything that a, I've seen. A 1 p.m. barbecue is somewhere between 1 and 10 p.m. You can right, show up, right. and that's cool. Like, yeah. yeah, it's so different. It also shows that even though people are busy, it's not the same type of busyness no. than in the Western world. Like, not people in the Western all. world, you got the schedule packed, and, you know, it has to. you have to be on time. Otherwise, things just fall apart. Here, people have more flexibility mm-hmm. in their lives in general. That's right. What do you got next? Um, yeah, the music. Talk about a little bit about the Latino music compared to what we, we're used to. What kind of music do you guys like uh, back home? Back home. <laughs> Brandon? What kind of music do you like, bro? I, I like all kinds of music. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty eclectic in my music. My musical. Like Nick Lachey? Stuff like that? I mean, perhaps Nick Lachey may or may <laughs> not be in a playlist you mean like, of mine. You mean like lullabies? Or I what? mean, Nick Lachey has a very soothing voice. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay. All right. You really? <laughs> hey, listen. Look, when, when my daughter was, uh, was first born, Nick Lachey, anybody that's my age knows Nick Lachey from 98 Degrees, Used to be married to Jessica Simpson. Oh, anyway, boy, any boy, other... ba- boy band era. Hey, I'm just telling you that I'm not just a casual fan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have seen 98 Degrees in concert. Oh, no. It's just getting worse and I worse. I mean, but the point is, the point is that he has a very, very nice voice. And he put out, he put out a lullaby album that we used to play for my daughter um, while she was sleeping. And then when my son was born, we played that at night. So it still occasionally comes up on my playlist, and I may or may not still listen to it at so night we know, now. All right, good. So we know what kind of music you like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carl, how about you? <laughs> yeah, I, I like any any so types of music, music, honestly. Uh, yeah, I like I like some like classics. You know, the Beatles, Bob Marley, right? Uh, I love classical music as well, um, more um, orchestrated type of stuff. But yeah, where, where I'm from, you know, I'm French Canadian, so we have our own music there that nobody else would know about. It's French Canadian music, and it's a lot of it's more folkloric, traditional. Mm. There's a little bit of everything, but um, that's kind of what I was raised on. Uh, oh, really? But anyways, yeah, wow. yeah, for sure, yeah. Well, cool. I'll, I'll sing some one day. He's got a great voice, but <laughs> he does have a good voice. Carl can yeah. sing. <laughs> um, In so addition anyway, to juggle fire, right? So, anyways, um, but yeah, when I first came here, I noticed like the same songs playing over and over, and it's like. It's a little Latino, kind of like makes you want to dance, you know. Bachata is a big one. The bachata is yeah. acceptable. I can do the bachata and the ballads. The rest of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really came to enjoy bachata. Yeah, bachata, bachata is like good. overly romantic, overly love songs, right? And it's like super. It's you guys can look up, for those of you not familiar, you can look up. Romeo Santos. Romeo He's like Santos. the most famous bachata singer, I believe. Prince Royce. Prince Royce, that's yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's uh, very beautiful love songs. I mean, <laughs> and the yeah. culture listens to this stuff here all the time. All the time. I don't know. Yeah, because reggaeton is very Reggae, common. I was going to say yeah, reggaeton. Yeah. That's, yeah. The part, that's oh, where I, like I draw that the much, line. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, right, right. And then but, you have all the traditional music as well. Sure. Some of that stuff's really cool, too. I mean, I think everywhere in the world has their traditions like you just mentioned where you you know where you come from and i think Mm -hmm. i think most places have that maybe the u.s less than most other places um because it's sort of a newer culture to some degree um and a lot of the natives were you know were wiped out essentially right so some of those some of those traditions are not there as much but this culture is one where you really have a lot of that um that ancient sort of cultural stuff that's passed down including the songs and the dancing and the ceremonies and stuff like that and that that's you know that stuff's cool like it's not it's not music i'm gonna listen to every day necessarily well they have that what's that instrument called what do they call that one flute that wooden kind of indian flute what is it called it's called the indian flute flute? oh it's got like a whole bunch of different flutes yeah 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 Yeah, that's that's that makes a nice sound right yeah yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no that that's uh well the traditional dancing here is very cool (coughs) yeah i mean and it's very it's not like um it's it's part of the culture like there's a traditional dance group in vilcabon there might be more than one they meet, they, they practice, they have a lot of presentations. Anytime there's a festival or some type of 
big event, they'll go and do a presentation. And they're really, what they they're do. really good. Yeah. Music's, the music's nice and it's very traditional. Like, you, yeah, in a way, it has like, a nice sound. They're, they're not yeah. ashamed of it or whatever. Like, they're no. wearing very traditional dresses. Sometimes they have yeah. feathers or like, you know, and they're into it. And it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. They're the men, the women. They have costume changes yep. Yep. and they're really synchronized. They're really into it. It's it's really well done. Yep. No, and that cultural that culture stuff is interesting, right? It's like the U.S. has the history they have. You know, with with the natives and with slavery and with segregation and all this kind of stuff, and it also kind of has you know the people's mentality in the U.S. is kind of we we believe we're free, right? Like we we have that mentality in the U.S. And then Latin America, like Ecuador, has a very different history, which has led to a very different culture, right? The the there was there was intermingling here right from the beginning, right? So you had Spain came and intermingled with with natives um but there was still there was still you know there wasn't slavery like what we call slavery but there was still you know you had to have the right name and the right bloodline to be able to own land and get business licenses and all this stuff but it was a totally it's a totally different sort of mentality right so you have all these you have basically a fairly homogeneous fairly mixed race country right between Spanish blood and, and indigenous blood. Um, and then you have a very different mentality, right? It's not the same like freedom and you cross my line, F you and I'll shoot you in the head if you, we don't, they don't do that down here. It's a much humbler, more like sort of, sort of, um, sort of uh, docile uh, mentality, you know, towards life and towards, it's, it's just a very different, you know, very different thing than coming from the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the next the one, uh, sports, sports. <laughs> you guys, you guys are big sports fan. I hear them talk about basketball, baseball, football all the time. They, they do. What do you guys do? You, you uh, Lady. Fa- fantasy sports. What is it called? Brand, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of fantasy Brand, sports. Brand yeah. This is an embarrassing episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I still play fantasy you, football with my boys, Posse Eleven. Play, um, What's ma- up? Do you play Magic the Gathering also. I do not play Magic, <laughs> Magic the Gathering. Dungeons and Dragons. I play fantasy football with my boys. We've, I don't know, we got twenty baseball, plus years. Baseball. We do play fantasy baseball as well. That's a little newer venture, but that's probably about fifteen years. Wow. Same. same no, group. I can't lie. Wow. I still, it's I still awesome. do the fantasy football. Anyways, yeah. what are you? Nice. That. Well, you know, the sports a little different. I mean, there's a lot more to choose from in the states, right? Like, yeah, you got all these different sports here. It's basically soccer, football. yeah, and volleyball. Yeah, but there's not like, equi volley. It's not equi volley. They play equi volley, but people don't watch it. There's not like equi volley no. TV kind of thing. No, no, no. no but they play it everywhere. They play it internationally. Right? Oh, do they? Yeah. There's like an um, there's like a national team equi volley. There's okay. like an, a, right? a U.S. Equi volley team. Equi volley. It's a, yes. So like it's an Ecuadorian it's, it's sport. It's an Ecuadorian sport. Well, There's... we have to describe it now. So equi volley <laughs> right. is volleyball, except you can hold basically. Right. So you can carry. You can right. carry. Right. right. Yeah. So the ball comes down. You don't have to hit it. You can like, right. You can like receive it and get it back out. Of and your the hand. net's way higher. It's way higher. Way higher now. Oh, that's right. right. And, that's way, and the balls spike, and can. hard. And the ball's way harder. It's like rock it's hard. It's a soccer ball. Basically. It's like a soccer ball. But it's hard soccer ball. Like a hard soccer ball. Like it's. Yeah. But it's not a volleyball. It's not no. comfortable. No. To do this, right? no, no, it hurts if you like try and bump normal and you get it on that on that bone there. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, hard. So it's yeah. Three, three on three, three on each side. Um, yeah. Typically, yeah, I don't even know the points and stuff, but they will bet money. Yeah, there's a lot oh, of betting yeah. that goes so on. So you don't yeah. go play if you, don't, you you when you play, you have to put in money, and whoever wins wins the pot, right? So, you know, yeah. they do that. And it's people will go and watch and bet as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it looks over. fun. I've never yeah. played. It I've looks really played. fun. But these guys are good. Like these yeah, guys, yeah, some of them are really impressive. Good, yeah. Honestly, no, really and impressive. they play pretty high, lo- relatively high level soccer. Yeah. Um, some of the soccer leagues are really good, and yeah, but that's really it. Those are the sports. Actually, I on mean, a side note, I think the new mayor of Loja was a famous Equivalli player. Was, yes. Right. Right. That's you know, how. That's, that's how he got elected. That's how he won. It? Everyone knew him, but because he was a. Uh, yeah, and and exactly. basketball would be the clear third sport. Um, you know, it's not a popular sport. It's not. All the kids aren't playing basketball, but there is good basketball. There's leagues. There's even professional leagues. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it is it is a sport that people do play. Right, right. Yeah. We've been talking about starting a basketball. We're going to do it. We're going to do what it for the do? kids, man. For We're the kids. Do, yeah, basketball some sports leagues kids. and baseball. we got to get baseball Baseball's going, too. Good. Yeah, we already we, – we, um, we sponsor the, the local IDV soccer team. 
Um, so we, you know, Abundant Living has sponsored some jerseys for that group. And then we also sponsored a, a men's league. There's a, right now it's the, the Vilca, what, what is it? Copa de Vilcabamba. It's the Vilcabamba championship. So it's a men's league soccer and, and the games are on the weekends and the whole town comes out. Right. Like the, 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 the bleachers are filled and there's vendors and their families and they have horns and they've got drums and they're. <laughs> They've got uniform, like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, well, and I heard that you came up with the name for the team that we sponsored. What's, uh, we, we what's did. the name? Then? We, sponsored, we sponsored the team that the mayor of Vilcabamba also sponsored, Vic, right. Victor Carpio. Their, oh, really? their, their name is Los Cracks. Los Cracks. Los Cracks. <laughs> That's great. Which apparently, I hadn't heard this before, but apparently in Spain and I guess other places, that means, like, cool, like, the cools it's like oh the, really something like that so but th- i guess they don't use that here I, i've never heard anyone say use that expression i don't know if you have here but those cracks that's yeah. the name we have like some c-r-a-c-k-s like, yeah it yeah. says it right on there <laughs> yeah, los, los cracks, cracks. <laughs> so we have we have some jerseys that we'll we'll show in another video we can we can uh, show you guys what those look like it's pretty they're, pre- they're pretty cool yeah. Los cracks. Yeah. yeah, and people are passionate here about their their soccer. Sure. So the the Ecuadorian team is truly beloved, and the country does pause when there's big big matches, particularly the World Cup. When there's... oh, the World Cup was awesome. Here. Yeah, it was. It was like awesome. the tiendas. Everybody's just standing. Any tienda that had a TV, any World Cup game that was on, there's just groups of people just standing out watching yeah. watching the TV and the attendance. And restaurants. And yeah, all restaurants. Yeah. And yeah. everyone on the street wears the jersey, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Ecuadorian yeah. shirts. Like, it's almost no, it's and a, if, it's, ahead, a piece, it's a piece of clothing you need to get to right. come down here. <laughs> My kids both have them. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then if Ecuador wins, oh, yeah. the whole city's out honking and, and everyone's happy. But it's no violence, no looting, nothing weird at all. Just, right. you know, happy people about the victory. Yeah. Um, this next one's great. So etiquette and expectations, uh, Carl's got written down here, but differences, you know, yeah, some of that stuff. So definitely um, lots of different, I mean, we could do a whole episode on that, on that subject, but I don't know what are, for you guys, what are some of the funnier ones that come to mind? There's a couple of things, and I don't know if that's super common, but I notice sometimes here the man will shake your hand like, like this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <don't, laughs> yeah, he's a limp fish. Yeah. The dead, not, the not dead everyone, fish. Right? Like, no, not like everyone. In business, more serious. More like, but yeah. a lot of times you'll like, <clears throat> try to, you know, your handshake. Well, know, it's not even showing. a shake. It's it's like, like it's like that. <laughs> it's yeah. strange. Yeah. It's weird. Like, like yeah. a limp handshake. There's not like a shake. There's no, not like you, a grab. Even right. like it's no. And you're right, Carl. It's it's like by class of person. Oh, is it? Like the upper, the middle to upper classes will not do that. Like they'll shake your hand 99 percent of the time. It's more like. The low, the workers. It's more like the lower class. That's a little, and I think that probably goes back to the cultural stuff. Like that probably goes back to like it wasn't that long ago in Ecuador mm-hmm. that the lower classes were still kind of beholden to the land. Right. You know that they were they were they were still like the, like the mobility. It's a much less mobile society mm-hmm. than 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 the U.S. Right. So people here now have full economic freedom, but culturally you kind of do what your father did to a large degree. Mm, yeah. um, and I think there's still, I think there's still some of that sort of cultural thing with people who come from the low quote unquote lower classes, which basically means they work the land, right? It's not, uh, it doesn't really mean much more than that, where they give sort of this extra dif- deference, this extra sort of respect. And I think, mm. I think maybe that limp handshake has something to do with that. I'm not sure. I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Even some of the some of the business folks we've we've met, they some yeah, you will occasionally, yeah, right. Like yeah. high level people, they they kind of have maybe it's not quite as exaggerated, yeah. but it's still like a very loose mm. kind yeah. of. I know. mean, if you're getting a good hard handshake, what nine out of ten times back home, you're getting it three out of ten here. Yeah, uh, like maybe that. that's yeah. yeah. And it could be also the upper class that has traveled to the U.S. or has gone have gone to Spain. Could be that. Yeah. You know, they've learned the ways that things are done I, there. I have a that's a pet peeve of like that. That's yeah, been such too. a struggle for me. Like so, shake my hand. <laughs> I would do this to be if people would grab my hand and they grab like yeah, the tip. Get on the camera. I, oh, you can't see. <laughs> like if I if I came to a handshake. And, and and somebody like grab my hand here, I would do this, <laughs> you know, like to sh- good, I would literally pull their hand in. Like, yeah. I don't know why, but I don't do that here, obviously, right, but right, right. I've wanted to a thousand <laughs> yeah. times. Well, how, how about the, you know, the kissing the female on the cheek? That's, yeah. that's a difference from back home, a difference, yeah. which really only gets funny when you go back home and forget that people don't do it there and you're leaning in to kiss, you know, 
everyone and <laughs> right. fr- and then people are like <laughs> like on the first time you meet them in a lot of cases if they're being yeah, introduced particularly to you. really right. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's one kiss on one cheek Right. It's not a double. It's not, and it's not actually a kiss. It's actually it's like you a, touch cheeks and kiss and the air. And you make the kiss sound. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <it's... laughs> although, although I've noticed there are girls who like want to let you know that they're kind of into you, and they will give you the little peck on the cheek, like extra, and you're like, huh. Wow. <laughs> but yep, that's uh, that's different. And there was a time, <laughs> it's kind of might be funny, but there was a time in Vilcabamba, within the gringo community, where people would greet each other by a kiss on the mouth do you, do you what? know what i'm talking about <laughs> i think what it was like was, was, it, was that, this bro? rainbow vest days <laughs> no those were, those were the rainbow vest days okay I think but it was, this, the I most, mean, it was the most it was the most it was the most hippie uh, hippie people i guess uh they would uh like there was there was a few like older ladies i would say 50s 60s and they would purposely kiss you on the huh. lips and that, that was not just me like Vilcabombans, uh, they'll, know, they'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we could cut it out. We could cut that part out. Yep. No way. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's that's a funny one. And just, you know, the formality, like the people greet here. They greet you right. a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So greet, it's a whole process of greeting. Everyone says buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas right. noches. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole... Greeting is is a thing, uh, you know. Buen provecho. When you're walking mm-hmm. by someone that's eating is very common. People here are very polite. Uh, they, you know, they move out of your way. They say excuse me. Although although they'll touch you and bump you, that's normal. Like it's completely normal. You know, no one really is saying sorry if they step on your shoe or if they bump you. Or like people are very comfortable touching one another right, right. Uh, in this culture. Um, but yeah, yeah. Also on the handshake piece, I notice in with like business people in Loja or when they want to be friendly with you, they'll shake your hand and like, touch sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Like, totally. They're letting you know they like you. Do you, you like right. being touched, Jesse? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, geez, you know, he asked for it. And I did. And I even <laughs> fell into the trap too. It's very sad. But Gosh. Yeah, and things. I know you well too. <laughs> yep. Yep. All yeah, right. Per- Go ahead. I mean, personal space, you guys have had. There's less. There's less people get to be a little closer in proximity, yeah, right. not too afraid of being in each other's spaces. Yeah. And, and people aren't worried about, you know, sanitation and germs and all those things the way people are back home. So the level of sort of everything has to be spotless and perfect and cleaned and yeah. and anti, you know, sprayed with something. And, you know, granted with COVID, people were were, right. were spraying with alcohol all kinds of all the time. But. But yeah, the culture is not so worried about that stuff. Yeah. Um, they're happy, you know, glasses just kind of often just get a rinse and then yeah. on to the next customer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so germaphobe, any of you germaphobes out there, yeah, you'll have some definite culture shock here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how about the meat, you know, hanging on a hook <laughs> right. in the 80 degree weather yeah. at the market? What's with a, la- with a lady standing there with a, going like this with a fly swatter, just right. kind of keeping the air moving. <laughs> right, right. It's... It, well, it's odd that there's not more flies is what I was going to say. Yeah, it's true. It's crazy how how many times I'll see meat and it's not just full of flies. Full yeah. of flies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you can go to the supermarket and sure. get all the, you know, the meat in the Wrap in the package. form you're used to as well. But, mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, what else we got? Well, the last one was, uh, is there a habit or something that you brought from the U.S. that you haven't, that it is uncommon here, that you're, you're still doing, that might be odd for some from for an Ecuadorian hmm, that I'm still doing you're putting us on the spot here I mean because <laughs> the things that come to mind right are like tipping which you kind of stop doing in most cases we talked about that on last week's show um, the punctuality piece right I think some people still do that although I don't <laughs> um, uh, you know a- as much so yeah I don't know I don't have one either, really. I'm trying to think. Is there something I do? That, have you noticed something that I do, no. Carl? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a well. It's your question, man. What, you, what, <laughs> what do you, you got? got? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm full. I'm full on immersed and, and assimilated <laughs> in the Ecuadorian culture. I, I've become like an Ecuadorian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, no, it's you, it's true. I can confirm that. And and it's just you almost don't have a choice right like if you're gonna be here as long as you and i have Mm -hmm. if you're gonna enjoy your life here Mm -hmm. you're gonna live like people live here 
Right. It's true. You know, true. like you might, you, you know, you're still, you're not going to be the same person, of course, as everybody. Right. But in terms of some of those just like flow of life things, you know, and attitudes and like perspectives, it, yeah. it shifts. Like those things yeah. shift after a while, which again, I'm appreciative of. Like I'm, I'm much less stressed out. I'm much less angry. I'm much, you know, I'm much more relaxed. Like uh, it's been nice for me. Like, yeah, yeah. And to be fair, there's a lot of stuff we do that Ecuadorians don't do. Like, oh, yeah. Like our kids are homeschooled. That's not common at all in Ecuador. No. Right. Uh, we make smoothies and blend everything and then Vitamix. They don't typically do a lot of that. Organic. Like, we eat organic like foreigners are in organic a lot, which is not a common thing right. countrywide. Right, right, right. It is in Vilcabamba. Yeah. No. All right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please give us a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Hit the bell so you get notified of the new comments. We'd love to see you down here July 24th, 21st for our Vilcabamba Lifestyle Retreat. Any last words before we get out of here? No, I think that's. I think this was good, man. We hope to see you here one day. So until then, see you next time.